Stanley Lambchop lived with his mother, his father, and his little brother Arthur. Stanley was four feet tall, about a foot wide, and a half an inch thick. He had been flat ever since a bulletin board fell on him. Stanley's family was used to him being flat. They didn't think much about it except when Mrs. Lambchop needed to clean behind the fridge. Or when Mr. Lambchop forgot his house key, which happened quite a bit. To the Lambchop, Stanley was perfectly normal. That's why Stanley was surprised when Arthur asked, Can I take you to show and tell? Stanley frowned. You mean because I'm so good at wiggling your ears, said Arthur. Miss Plum really wants to see it. Oh, said Stanley. Sure, if Miss Plum said so. Stanley felt his face turning pink. It always turned pink when Miss Plum's name came up. Miss Plum was the prettiest teacher in the whole school. Thanks, Stanley, said Arthur. No problem, said Stanley. That's what brothers are for. Arthur smiled to himself. He knew the real reason Stanley was going to show and tell, but he didn't say a word. At school, Arthur's classmates took turns showing and telling. Sophie showed her mouse, Squeakers. He just loves cheese, she said. Manny held up his grandpa's false teeth. My grandpa loves cheese too. Arthur introduced Stanley, who wiggled his ears like crazy. My goodness, said Miss Plum. Today, I have something for show and tell too, Miss Plum added shyly. She held out her left hand. A big ring sparkled on her finger. I'm getting married, said Miss Plum. Stanley felt his heart sink. Miss Plum? Mary? The other kids jumped up and crowded around to look at Miss Plum's ring. Let me see, said Sophie. He, she bumped into Manny. Squeaker slipped out of her hands. Ouch, said Manny. Watch it. He dropped his grandpa's teeth. The false teeth bounced twice, then clamped onto Squeaker's tail. Weak, squeaked Squeakers. He took off running. Oh dear, cried Miss Plum. She reached out to grab Squeakers and her new ring flew off her finger. To Stanley, this ring seemed to move in slow motion. He watched it sail toward Squeakers and fall straight down over the mouse's head, where it landed like a sparkly collar around his neck. Squeakers squeaked again and ran even faster. He zipped across the classroom, scampered up the windows, and vanished through a crack in the small tire. My mouse, cried Sophie. My grandpa's teeth, cried Mary. My ring, cried Miss Plum. Stanley stood up. I'll save you, Miss Plum. I, I mean, I'll save your ring, and Squeakers, and the teeth. Stanley raced to the spot where Squeakers had managed. Arthur, he said, that crack in the sea. It's like I win your home. Give me a boost. On the count of three, said Arthur. One, two, three. With a grunt, Arthur pushed Stanley high over his head, just as he had done a dozen times before. Mr. Lambchop really did forget his keys a lot. Stanley slid through the crack. I see squeakers, Stanley yelled. Come here, boy, come on. Below, the students heard crashing and brushing as Stanley chased the mouse over their heads. Go, Stanley, go, yelled Manny. It's no use, Stanley said, panting. He's too fast. Then Arthur thought of something. Sophie, where's Squeaker's cheese? Right here, she said. Arthur sla grabbed a slice and flung it through the crack. Stanley, try this! The crashing stopped. The thrashing stopped. Then the class saw Stanley's arm go through the ceiling. Squeaker sat in his hand, happily making the cheese. Stanley's other arm looked up. The false teeth and the ring dangled from his fingers. Last of all came Stanley himself. Stretching out of the crack like a boy-sized strip of tack. Oh, Stanley, said Miss Plum, once he had, was safely on the ground. Your 
you're my hero! She gave Stanley a big hug. Stanley felt his face turn pink. Bright pink. What's wrong with Stanley? said Sophie. Arthur grinned. His face always turns pink when... Then Arthur stopped. He looked at Stanley. When he's wiggling his ears, he said. Thanks, Arthur, whispered Stanley. No problem, said Arthur. That's what brothers are for.